Welcome everyone to Learning with Rev. In this video, we are going to be digging down into the TensorFlow API, specifically the tf.config menu of the API. In this section of the API, it goes over different device uh, configuration. Uh, your devices could be your CPU, your GPU, or your TPU. And today we are going to be focusing specifically on the CPU and the GPU. So as we scroll down here, uh, these are the specific functions and classes we will be looking over today. The get visible devices, list logical devices, list physical devices, and then we are going to set visible, visible devices. So in this way we are going to manipulate the devices visible to TensorFlow. Next we're going to look into more details of our devices. We're going to get the device details, get the memory growth information, set memory growth, get memory information. Then we're going to go into more programmatic uh, settings that you may use such as soft device placement, uh, eager execution, and tensor float 32 execution. So here we go. Uh, these first few cells we're going to be importing uh, OS and setting a log level. This is just to prevent uh, TensorFlow from spitting out a bunch of warnings and information just to make this a little cleaner. And the first thing we're going to do is get our device information. So we're going to use tf.config list logical devices. Right here you can see the information and how to use it. You can view all this information in TensorFlow's API at tensorflow.org. Next we're going to get our physical list our physical devices and then get visible devices. So as we run this cell here we're going to get three outputs. First our logical devices. So with TensorFlow, you are able to split up your CPU or GPUs into multiple logical devices if you wish. Uh, today we will not be doing that, but that is what the logical devices are doing. If you look closely, our physical and visible devices have the exact same output. Uh, list vis visible devices actually just returns your physical devices, and here we can see our CPU and our GPU. Now we're going to restart our kernel uh, because for this next section we are going to be setting our visible devices and if we've already accessed our logical, phys physical, or visible devices this will not work. So we're going to import TensorFlow again and in this case uh, we have set our visible devices of our GPU to an empty list and uh, what this has done is it is now returning only our CPU when we run get visible devices. Previously when we ran visible devices we received our, uh, our CPU and our GPU. This is a good uh, function often that I use if I'm trying to test a system see if there is more efficiency on the CPU or the GPU so you can disable the GPU uh, for that process or if you want to disable the CPU to make sure it's not being used for anything, you can just run purely on the GPU. There are some uh, chances in uh, TensorFlow that it will actually run more efficiently on a GPU, specifically if your input data is relatively small and the latency of moving the data from the CPU to the GPU is longer than the speed up you would get by running on the GPU. We're going to reset our kernel once again, and in this part here we're going to list our physical devices and we're going to get our information. So all this information is te technically experimental, but it has been in the API for a very long time, so I don't, I'm not worried about any of this going away. It may get slightly adjusted in the future, but all this information should be visible. If you look at our CPU details, there's nothing there. The TensorFlow API specifically tells us with these settings it only gets information from the GPU and some of these settings will also get information from a TPU but I do not have a TPU in my system so that will not help us here. Under our GPU details we get our compute compatibility of 8.6 if you go on TensorFlow's website it tells you this is not the performance but it tells you the uh, features that this GPU has and I have an NVIDIA RTX 3060. Next thing we've done is we have uh, accessed our memory growth information. 
So with TensorFlow, when you initialize TensorFlow and you create your first tensor or load your neural network, it is going to allocate as much of the GPU as it can to TensorFlow. This will show almost 100% usage of your GPU, which is fine. It's not actually using all that, but it's pre-allocated. Let's say, for example, you want to run two, you want to train two networks in parallel with two different settings. This will prevent you from doing that because the first network up has automatically allocated all the memory. So you can set your memory growth to true. And when you set this to true, it only allocates the memory that it is actually using. That way you may be able to use train two or three networks at the exact same time. The last uh, method we have here is get memory information. This uh, function shows us our current usage and our peak usage uh, since the initialization of TensorFlow or since you've reset it. And there is a method uh, in the experimental section to reset your uh, memory info. Now we're going to move down into uh, soft placement. So soft placement is enabled uh, by default uh, in TensorFlow. Soft placement means if a certain operation is unable to be done on your GPU, it moves that operation to the CPU. This may cause some latency or slowdowns that you're not expecting, and it may be hiding problems that you don't see. So what you can do is you can set soft device placement to false, and the device placement information will show that. We'll run this uh, cell here to show you. Initially, our device placement was true. We set it to false, and now it returns false. Now we're going to look at eager execution. By default, we will see that TensorFlow does not run eagerly. Uh, running eagerly means the TensorFlow operations are running outside of a static graph, and this may slow things down. Uh, often, uh, you may use a at tf.function decorator around uh, functions that you may have in your pre-processing steps of your network, and that will make those uh, functions run non-eagerly. It will make them run in a TensorFlow graph. Um, however, this is not always good for debugging because it will throw weird TensorFlow errors without giving you your Python output and telling you exactly what is going on. So I would recommend during your training or when you're figuring out your scripts to always have eagerly set to true and only when you're sure everything is working and you're running for real to flip it to um, false uh, and that way it will run a little more efficiently. And the last thing we're going to look here is TensorFlow float32 execution. This is a new data type, a new precision uh, that uh, TensorFlow has come out with. It is their own custom precision that has the same range as floating point 32, but the precision of floating point 16. This increases the computation as quantizing to float floating FP16, but you don't lose all the precision. More information can be found at this link here, and I will put it down in the description. By default, uh, this will only be functional on Ampere uh, cards and higher, so 30 series and higher. And we can see our current status is true. You can set it to false if you want, and uh, we can see that it is set to false. Uh, NVIDIA claims that setting this to default to true does not change any of the training or any of the convergence that may happen during your training, but if you do have that worry, you can always set it to false. Thank you all for watching this episode of Learning with Rev. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.